In the last part, we saw that Chu Xiao was sure that Yan Shun would not kill off such a talented group of people. Yet, everything went completely beyond Chu Xiao's wildest imagination. Without even two days since then, the air had spread throughout all of Yan Bei. On the second night, the messengers started scaling Hui Hui mountains again. There were 20 men, yet only one was able to reach the peak. The rider of the horse was bathed in blood, and one of his arms was attached to his body by only a thin piece of flesh, as though it could fall off any time. Looking at Chu Xiao, he was already incapable of words. Using the other hand, he unbuttoned his shirt and passed a letter to Chu Xiao. Even though the letter had been soaked with blood, one could still see the words written on it. Ah Chu, help us. Chong Yu. After hesitating for a while, Chu Xiao slowly stood up. The cold mountain wind blew on her body as she took a deep breath. Hey Xiao, prepare my horse. I will be heading down. Listening that, a flash of relief flashed across the messenger's eyes, following which he fell towards the ground head first. Only then Chu Xiao noticed that there was an arrow that was deeply embedded in his back, straight through his heart. No one knew how he was able to hold on and climb to the top of the mountain in such condition. With merely 20 guards, Chu Xiao donned her cap as she charged into the darkness of the night, with the chilly rain washing on her face. The growing unease enveloped her. The grew reluctant to think future as she pushed her horse to go even faster. In the darkness of the night, the journey seemed like an unending distance. Lady Yu's 3,000 strong group of bodyguards now only had 100 men. Everyone was wounded, yet they stood alert the moment they saw Chu Xiao approach. In that heavy thunderstorm, Lady Yu lied down in a straw hut. When Chu Xiao entered, Lady Yu was sleeping. Hearing sounds, Lady Yu woke up and slowly opened her eyes. Her pale face broke into a light smile upon seeing Chu Xiao's appear, as though she was completely expecting her arrival. As she greeted Chu Xiao, you have come. An arrow had stuck her chest, and even though the wound had been bandaged, no one dared to pull the arrow out without medicine to treat her. Seeing that, Pingan's eyes turned red as he sniffed and informed, I will go and look for Uncle Dali. With that said, he opened the door and walked out. The room quietened down with only the two ladies' presence. Incidentally, both of them were dressed in white. Kneeling beside Lady Yu's bed, Chu Xiao could immediately tell how serious Lady Yu's injury was. Shallowing the sadness, Chu Xiao quietly asked, Lady Yu, what happened? Taking a deep breath, Lady Yu coughed as an unhealthy blast surfaced on her face. The taxes in Changxing 
were raised and the locals there revolted. Some of the leaders of the guild participated as well. Now there is no way to salvage the situation. Listening that, Chu Xiao said quietly that you also participated. How could you be so reckless? To participate in the civilians' revolt is equivalent to rebellion. Yan Chun initially did not trust the Da Tong guild. How could you be so careless? Lady Yu replied, Have you seen how Chang Xing suffered a snowy disaster the previous winter and this year? It was a victim of poor harvest and their livestock died by the dozens. At the crucial moment, Yan Chun had decided to force them to give up their food, which was already insufficient to last them through winter. That would be equivalent to asking them to die. Looking at Chu Xiao, Lady Yu continued, His Highness is preparing for war and wishes to conquer the Chui Ui Pass before winter. As such, he had already recruited many soldiers and gathered food from civilians. There were already many who starved to death. Even if I knew my eventual outcome, I had no choice but to do this. Ah Chu, you are a good child, but you have led such a difficult life. I hope that you understand that not everything in this world can follow your will. Many a time, we may have tried our best, but we may not achieve our desired outcome. You are still young. There is still a bright future ahead of you. Kneeling by Lady Yu's bedside, Chu Xiao pressed on Lady Yu's wound in hopes of stopping the blood that was still seeping out. With the fresh blood tainting Chu Xiao's pristine white dress, Chu Xiao bit her lips and struggled to keep the tears in her eyes. Lady Yu, you need to hang in there. Pingan has gone to look for a doctor. I can't be saved. Lady Yu lightly shook her head. I am just sharing the story of Princess Agent Season 2 from my point of view, using previous drama characters to understand the story better. So thank you for staying with me and I am going to share the story continuously. Stay with me, subscribe and like the video to support me.